Hey, First Free family. Well, here we are on our final video in this series. Throughout the past seven weeks, we've focused on varying things. We've started week one talking about revival in our house and our own lives uh, before uh, that takes place uh, in the church and the greater uh, bride of Christ and that Revival, I want to make certain that we understand that it was not this big tent revival, but it was more reviving our hearts to the things of Christ. Yeah. In week two, Pastor Chuck and Ruth, they talked about repentance and brokenness through prayer and fasting and what that looks like in the life of a believer. Week three, the Blooms talked about a fellowship and community and because we know that we cannot have union with God or strong union with God uh, without union of the church, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then Pastor Josh and Brandy Party, they talked about silence and uh, that allows us to hear God's voice. And in the midst of everything that's going on, all the voices that are surrounding us, the media voices, uh, family voices, social media voices, just taking some silence to listen and listen to God speak because he is still speaking. Paul and Diane Geddes, they talked about the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and how he can bring about that change. It's how we uh, continue to allow the Holy Spirit to revive our hearts to the things of Christ. We see that fruit being produced and, and we see that transformational process that's taking place. And finally, Steve and Bev Ralph, they talked last week about prayer and praise in the midst of, of, uh, of pain and how that looks like and what that looks like to stay close to the Father's heart during that time. And even though this is our final a video, our final post of a video, uh, we want to encourage you, if you feel led, to continue in this rhythm and discipline of purposefully setting aside an afternoon throughout the week to truly focus on the Lord and what He has for you through a time of prayer and fasting. This has been a very eye-opening two months, and I'm sure that you've experienced a wide range of emotions during this time, and we have too. I know personally fasting is something new for Jesse and I in this vein of doing it each and every Wednesday. Uh, it, it was something that we were not used to. It was something we hadn't done before. Specifically, there were times when our bodies were incredibly weak by the end of the day, but Here's the exciting thing that we've been learning, and that as a body of Christ, we can remember together with gladness that when Christ himself was drawn out to the wilderness, to the desert, by the loving foreknowledge of the Spirit, and then was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, in human standards, we see a battle being waged when he could be considered to be at his weakest. But the reality is, is that he was spiritually ready for battle. Commenting on Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, Eugene Peterson wrote, The wilderness gives Jesus strength. It is not simply a place of negation or temptation. It is also a place of preparation and perception. Absent of human uh, power structures and controls, a wild place where supernatural forces move unfettered. A place that can empower depending upon how the experience is handled. Our wilderness and our deserts are not our endings. Mm. It is the Spirit of God who leads us about them. They are our opportunities. And so our final charge to you today that we want to leave you with is a new perspective and a battle plan. A new perspective and a battle plan. The new perspective is that this is all an opportunity to leave behind our passivity or fretful waiting and take up arms. Listen to us. This is not the ending. This is not the ending. Just as COVID-19 is not the ending of what God is and is wanting to continue to do in your life and in the life of his bride, the church, this is an opportunity for each and every one of us to respond to the divine calling that the Lord has placed in our lives. Recently, dear friends of ours shared with us a battle plan of sorts. 
And the interesting thing about battle plans is that um, they're never meant to be kept secret for only those in leadership or authority to know about because we're all uh, part of this together. So therefore, taking what we have all been learning and practicing the past two months, uh, we want to leave you with a simple but powerful three-step battle plan as we look at the uncertain days ahead. And so the first step, step one, uh, we started out even in the beginning of this coronavirus by me sharing in front of you as a congregation that we are going to be a people. We're going to be a church that chooses prayer over panic. And so that's it. Step one is to pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray by the Holy Spirit's leading in your life. Name things. Ask God to intervene in those areas for his kingdom and his will to be done brokenness and being silent before the Lord, listening to him speak. All of those truths that we've been learning about for the past seven weeks fall into play here. Ask for him to reveal hidden things. You remember that flashlight illustration, a story that Diane shared with you from her own life and the Holy Spirit revealing those things, things in prayer that only he can do. Listen, he is in control and he is on the throne. But as Jesse and I have personally been learning we need to be active participants through what he wants to do on earth. And there is much happening in the spiritual realm that is unseen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pray. The second part of our battle plan is we're going to fight. Obviously not one another. Uh, as we learned, we cannot have fellowship broken with our brother and sister in Christ and not expect fellowship to be broken in some way or hindered in some way with our Lord. So this fight is not by posting hateful things on social media. It's not that. We fight by surrendering to our Lord and daily putting on the armor of God, staying close and being in the word of God and following where he wants to lead. We are not a church of fear. The victory is already won, but the enemy wages attacks daily, and we cannot be naive to this. Yeah. And the third is trust. And by trust, this is not... Um... A passive thing. This is an action. It's a looking forward to something that we don't have yet. Um, often I have been uh, convicted of taking a, I guess there's nothing we can do approach. Mm. Um, and that's just not true because trust and placing that trust in the hands of my father is a very active uh, role. Now things may seem hazy and unclear, but now is the time to really grab hold of his promises each day to remain steadfast in his ways and his character and by his spirit, because we can't do it on our own, mustering up our own strength to get out of the boat and to trust that our savior will not let us fall. Bev and Steve left us with that beautiful picture of Adeline just resting nuzzled in the heart of the ones who love her. And this is the place out of which trust is born in the very chest of our Lord. And so in the upcoming weeks, even this week, there will be new information coming forth and more changes that the Lord will help us navigate. Changes that we will be communicating to you as the body of First Free. But before any of that, the most important info that we could possibly share with one another is what we've talked about today. And Jesse's going to close with reading a passage from a psalm that we feel encapsulates best the battle plan that we've just laid out. For nothing better encompasses all three actions of praying, of fighting, and of trusting than when we praise, than when we worship, than when we praise. And so she's going to read Psalm 100. Psalm 100, let the whole earth shout triumphantly to God. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. Amen. Well, would you join me in prayer as we begin our time of prayer and fasting this week? Gracious Heavenly Father, 
you are good and your faithfulness endures forever. And Lord, today, as we as a church uh, spend this time together in prayer and fasting, God, we surrender what it is that we're holding on to. And Lord, we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would help us fight, that you would help us trust, that you would continue to give us the words to pray. Lord, right now we do want to pray for our leaders. We want to pray for Mayor McNamara. We want to pray for Governor Pritzker. We want to pray for President Trump and everyone else. We pray, Lord, that you would intervene in a powerful way in each and every one of our government leaders' lives. That your Holy Spirit would soften their hearts and minds and that they would continue to turn to you, that they would seek you, those that aren't. God, we love you so much. And Lord, we pray that you would continue to do a mighty work, not just here in Rockford, not just in Illinois, not just in the United States, but around the world. Lord, we do pray that your kingdom come, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we love you. We thank you. And we ask all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, church, we want you to know that you are missed, that you are loved. And we'll be hearing again from, from the leadership of the church very soon as we continue to prayerfully consider uh, and pray through what's next in terms of returning to church because the church was never closed. And so we cannot wait uh, to hear and uh, to see what's next on the horizon. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you soon.